Good afternoon, St. Mark family members and friends. Welcome to the finale of Homecoming 2020. This has been a great day of celebration and jubilee here at our church. And it was great seeing you all this morning as we celebrated Homecoming 2020 right here in our parking lot. And I tell you, Bishop Hood blessed us with a powerful message this morning. A few weeks ago, I had the pleasure of looking through our media archives and I found a DVD that said Homecoming Afternoon Service. It was a shock to me because we had not had an afternoon service here at St. Mark in many years. And so I wanted to see what it was all about. To my surprise, the service was a blessing to me, and I couldn't keep this message out of my head. And so today I want to share this message with you to close out Homecoming 2020. Reverend James E. Collins, who is no stranger here at St. Mark, and the Goldsboro Chapel Church were our guests. Deacon Jim is your bro, directed the choir as only he could, and Reverend Collins reminded us that we should be a church on the move. Let's go to the service.
Amen. Let's give the Lord. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. Uh, that choir director of ours, he has a tendency to turn the church into a jute joint <laughs> of praise. Amen. Don't sit there and act like you don't know what a jute joint is. Amen. But it's good to be in the house of the Lord on this evening for such a momentous occasion. Praise God. We count it our honor and privilege to be here on today. Amen. Amen. To this great council of bishops that are assembled here, let's give the Lord a handful of these great men of God. Amen. To the General Bishop Smith, amen. Count it not robbery to invite us to come this evening and share from thus saith the Lord. Amen. To the entire St. Mark Church family, we count it a privilege and we count it an honor to be here today. Amen. And we are excited about what has transpired thus far in this great place. And to the first lady of this great house, Sister Dar Smith. Amen. Let's give her some love on this evening. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. My heart certainly does go out to the General Bishop. I thank him uh, so kindly for the friendship, words of counsel. Uh, both private and professional that he have shared with me down through the years and we certainly are appreciative and we are grateful and certainly as a preacher a young preacher at that praise God I've learned that uh, when you take an attitude that you don't know it all praise God and you're willing to listen God will bless you and he will bless you real good amen amen considering the nature of today's this evening's program we will not uh, hold you long praise God we will thus give you what the Lord has given us today to share with this church on today we ask that you would turn your attention to the book of Acts chapter 2 verse 41 Acts chapter 2 through 48 and those of you that are taking Notes, please bear with my exegesis this evening because I'm going to cut across the field because of the nature of the day's service. So we're going to get what amounts to as a sermonette. Amen. Um, the second chapter of Acts, beginning at verse 42, and I'm reading from the New Living Translation, at least I be accused of heresy on this evening. All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to the sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper and to prayer. A deep sense of all, your Bible may say fear, came over all of them and the apostle performed many miraculous signs and wonders. And all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared money with those in need. They worshiped together at the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy and generosity, all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all people and each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. Let us pray now at this hour. Our gracious Father, our God, we come now as a yielded vessel to preach and proclaim that which thou have planted within thy servant this evening. Have thy way, dear master, realizing it's never about us, but it's always about the message always about your people have your way in here today and we give you glory we give you honor we give you praise in jesus the christ's name and the church did say amen, amen. briefly we want to 
speak from a subject this evening, a church always on the move. Can you say that with me? A church always on the move. If you are a familiar with life in the church and spiritual warfare, please understand that Satan spends a great deal of his time and his effort trying to demoralize, destroy, and depress the church. Everything that happens in the life of the church, we should see, I believe, is connected in some way or another to spiritual warfare. And most of all, amen, it is aimed at an effort to break down the effectiveness and the witness of the church. I submit that Satan has no problem with the church doors being open as long as that church is ineffective as a witness. Amen. An ineffective church is no threat to the forces of evil. Because of its very nature, it is ineffective, it is getting nothing done, it is in the community, it is sitting there, but it's really not doing anything. Satan has no problem with that kind of church. But a church who is effectively and positively impacting the lives of its people and community will be met along the way with opposition and face quite a few obstacles. But this is a good thing because it means and it suggests that you are doing what you are doing is impactful, it is relevant, it is needful. Therefore, you are met with hell's resistance. And I'm sure to the church to make it to the dedication phase of the vision, there have been some ups. There have been some downs, there have been some heartaches, there have been some pain, some fallouts, and perhaps there have even been some walkouts. But as a church family, you have prevailed, and you have come to this present moment in history where collectively you can rejoice that you add it to the church and improve God's place of worship, and there we say, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. By adding and improving the church, you are sending a message, amen, and you are sending a good message to God. You are saying that the Lord's house is important. It is important how it looks. It is important that it is functional. It is important that it is positioned for the future wave of saints and sinners who are yet to come. And I want you to know as well as you already know that the devil does not like it. We, amen, know that there are plenty of forces that desire to destroy the presence and influence of the church in the world. Amen. But I suggest and say to us today that I don't know about you, but I believe that the church is worth holding on to. I believe that the church can make a difference. I believe that the church, that we are better off with the church. I believe that the church is needful. I believe that God instituted the church just as the Bible declares. The apostolic church was a church that was always on the move. And our text today shows us that the apostolic church, what they did to stay on the move for Christ and to maintain its power, its influence, and effectiveness in the community. First of all, let me suggest to us that if we are going to be that church that continues to stay on the move, the text, amen, indicates to us, first of all, in verse 42, that they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. In other words, they put into practice the things that the apostles had taught them. They were, there was, amen, if you will, a respect for leadership and what leadership said. The people were were obedient both to God and to the apostles. There were no undermining. There were no second guessing, if you will, what the apostles said. Whatever the apostles brought to the people, the people received and received with joy and obedience. It was not viewed with hesitation and skepticism. I'm talking about amen, the apostolic church. Not only that, but the people understood that the apostles were chosen men of God. They were sent by God to lead. Amen. And this church was blessed because the major decisions were made from the top down and not from the bottom up. The church, amen, that has respect for its leadership. 
and listens to his leadership is a blessed church. Can I get a witness this evening? Because the people in the apostolic church not only obey leadership, they, the text tells us that there was fear of God in the church. Why did the apostles, why did the people obey the apostle? Simply because they feared God. They were a man afraid that if they disobeyed the men of God, that God would certainly judge them accordingly. Amen. They understood that if they they fought against the men of God, the apostles, something bad was going to happen to them. And for this reason, there was respect in the church. People didn't talk to the apostles any kind of way. Amen. They had a godly fear of what God had appointed and placed over his church. Secondly, my sisters and brothers, if we are going to be the church that stays on the move for Christ, there must be a unification of the body. Amen. We are told in verse 44 that all the members of the church were together and had all things in common. Amen. There was teamwork and unification of effort. Everybody was pulling together and working for the same common goal. The Bible declares in Mark 3 and 35 that a house that is divided against itself cannot stand. The presence of the apostolic church was felt because the church pulled together and supported its own. The church cannot be ineffective if it cannot get a man and it will not get anything constructive done a man when the church is at odds and fighting amongst itself. I know I'm right about it. The church cannot be effective if the members are fighting fighting one another, if the officers are fighting one another, if the mothers are fighting the deacons and the deacons are fighting the mothers and the mothers are fighting the preacher and the choir is fighting the organist and if all of this fighting takes place, the church that operates in this fashion will surely die. Why? Because people will leave the church. People don't want to be a part of a hot mess. God's presence will not draw new members. In other other words God is not going to make a mess uh, by adding to a mess uh, when the church is on the move for God uh, it is a blessed church and God's hands will sustain it uh, in the text God added to the church daily such as should be saved uh, and one of the reasons the Lord blessed this apostolic church is because the church was unified in its efforts uh, everyone was pulling together with which involved at times putting aside their own individual feelings and their thoughts for the good of the church. When there's unification of effort, we witness in a very real and tangible way the evidence and reward of our labor as we are witnessing here this evening. Amen. Then we can reflect back and we can say as the presider, the preacher, the bishop have said, look what the Lord has done. Amen. If the church is going to stay on the move for Christ, there must be genuine koinonia, which is to say that there must be fellowship amongst the church members. We must have a mindset that we need each other and that we need one another. Amen. Because if we fellowship in true koinonia, amen, we will understand what communion really means. Amen. Not only am I concerned about you, but you are also concerned about me. Fellowship means that I check on you and make sure that you're all right. Koinonia means that we have fellowship beyond the building. The text says that the members of the apostolic church continue continued daily with one another in the temple and breaking bread from house to house. Uh, I don't know about you church but it's good to be in the house of the Lord this evening. Now, amen. And to witness a church always on the move. Uh, to the church we say continue to do the good works that the Lord have assigned to this part of the vineyard. Uh, we thank God for this great
great man of God, uh, this great preacher and prognosticator of the gospel. Uh, amen. Will you celebrate with me this evening? Amen. A church always on the move. Uh, and how many of you know that if we are on the move for the Lord, uh, the scripture lets us know that no weapon formed against us uh, shall prosper. Uh, amen. I don't know about you, but if God be for us, uh, who in the world can be against us? Uh, I wish you would tell your neighbor on this evening, yes, I want to be uh, in a church that's always on the move. Uh, because a church that's going somewhere uh, is a church that has the presence of God. Uh, and when God is in the church, uh, everything will work out all right. Uh, come on, neighbor, tell your neighbor, thank you uh, that we serve an awesome God. Uh, we serve a right now God. Uh, and I don't know about you, but I'm glad uh, to be a part of the church. Uh, I'm glad to be a part uh, of a church always on the move. Uh, we serve a right now God. Uh, and yes, he did declare uh, that the powers of evil uh, shall not prevail against the church. Uh, I don't know about you, uh, but every church has some hell raisers, uh, but that's all right. Uh, God will use the hell raisers uh, to move the church where he wanted to be. Uh, and I like what the trustee said this evening. Uh, we getting ready uh, for another project. Uh, God is not through yet. Uh, there's more work to be done. Uh, there are higher mountains to climb. Uh, there are wider rivers to cross. Uh, deeper valleys that we got to go over. Uh, I don't know about you, uh, but we serve a right now God. Uh, is there anybody here uh, that you're glad to be a part of the church? Uh, you're glad to be a part of the number uh, because the God we serve, uh, he cannot fail uh, though the storm clouds rage uh, and the sea billows roll. Uh, I don't know about you, but tell your neighbor, uh, say neighbor, uh, stay on board. Uh, things don't get rough, uh, but stay on board. Uh, sometimes you won't understand, uh, but stay on board. Uh, sometimes you're going to be misunderstood, uh, but stay on board. Uh, sometimes your feelings uh, are going to get hurt, uh, but tell your neighbor, uh, say we're going somewhere. Uh, stay on board. Uh, and this old ship of Zion, uh, when it set sail, uh, and we stick our swords uh, in the sand to raise war, uh, no more. Uh, God uh, is going to give us a home. Uh, tell your neighbors and neighbor, uh, I don't know about you, uh, but I'm glad uh, that I'm saved. Uh, I'm sanctified uh, and I'm filled. Uh, with the Holy Ghost uh, am I right about it uh, tell somebody uh, I'm going uh, to stay uh, with my church uh, yes uh, I am uh, give God some praise uh, give him some glory uh, tell him thank you uh, ain't he alright uh, ain't he alright uh, say yes uh, say yes It reminded me a few weeks ago that even though we can't get inside of the building, even during this global pandemic, we still have to be a church on the move. St. Mark family members and friends, on behalf of our pastor, Bishop Alden Smith, our First Lady Doris Smith, and the entire leadership here at St. Mark, we thank each of you for sticking with us all week long. Even though we cannot get together inside the church, we still had a phenomenal time virtually. I want to take this opportunity to thank Bishop Alden Smith, who gave me this opportunity to do this this week. Thank you to Lady Doris Smith and Brother Gregory Darden who assisted me. And lastly, to the women of the Mark who assisted us on yesterday. Sister Renee Dixon, Sister Aileen Rowe, Sister Gwen Matthews, and Sister Michelle Marks. Thank you for your support to Homecoming 2020. Before I bid you farewell for the afternoon, I want to leave you with our theme scripture in Philippians 3 and 14. This week I read it from the Message Bible, written by Eugene Peterson. 
it says, I'm not saying that I have all this together or that I have it made, but I'm well on my way reaching out for Christ, who has so wondrously reached out for me. Friends, don't get me wrong. By no means do I count myself an expert in all of this, but I've got my eye on the goal, where God is beckoning us onward to Jesus. I'm off and running, and I'm not turning back. So let's keep focused on that goal. Those of us who want everything God has for us, if any of you have something else in mind, something less than total commitment, God will clear your blurred vision. You'll see it yet. Now that we're on the right track, let's stay on it. St. Mark, I don't know about you. I might not have it all together. I might not be an expert, but I've got my eye on the goal. And I have a determination that no matter what I'm going to, continue to press toward the mark. Happy homecoming, St. Mark. The Lord bless you and keep you as our prayer. Good night.